G'day. In today's episode, I'm opening up a HP Victus, and I'm just curious to see what can be upgraded and what can be changed in this relatively new model. Checking out the model number, we have, well, product ID is G3PSKU3, Victus by HP Gaming Laptop. Now, it looks to be that we have, just have Phillips head screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully with those removed, we should be able to get into the laptop. And let's see what could be changed and upgraded when we get there. I do know this one has already been upgraded from eight gig of RAM to 16, so two fours. So assumably, if that's the case, there should be two dim slots available inside this machine. So far, these front screws have been the same. Go, slide it down. And the back screws look to be of the same length as well. Hoping from here that there really isn't too much weight or too much fighting to get inside the machine. Just trying to get a nail in there. No, not quite working. So I'll use a thin pry tool just to pry it up just slightly. So, and I should be able to fit the plastic one in there from there. And just work my way around. Okay. And even though this is a soft plastic pry tool, it did look like it did scratch up that just slightly. I'm not sure if it's the case, but we'll find out in a moment. Lifting, lifting, lifting. I'll work my way from the front to the back. There we go. We do have to undo the, the seam that's along here. There we go. So this bit here needs to stay. This bit here comes off. And looking inside here, not quite the design I was expecting for this one. As we can see, Victus G3PQ, which I'm assuming is the model number. We do have a relatively low, smallish battery over here. Where are we? Should I mention 52 watt hour? Does look like there is the option to get a larger battery, which will fully extend over to here. Um, let's say if we were to upgrade this one, which sadly I'm seeing a lot of not uh, non upgradability which is a bit disappointing first thing we see right here ssd2 we do not have an m.2 slot available there we have this one right here which that is all right but a second one would definitely help so to begin with i want to disconnect the power before i remove either the mvme or the ram should be able to do that just by pulling these two tabs down like so and with that disconnected from there, if we were to upgrade the MBME, as of which afterwards we'd have to reinstall Windows, which should lift up, or you'd have to use cloning software prior. So in my particular model, we have an SK Hynix Gen 3, 512 gig, SK Hynix PC 401. I'm assuming the model is for this particular one. So a 512 gig MBME reinstall that basically we slot it in at 45 degrees and pull down there is a little notch taken out on here which corresponds to here so 45 degrees push down the gold pin should disappear and from there we should be able to lay it flat and put that screw back in from there next up would be ram we have these two slots here should be able to pull these tabs outwards and the RAM sits up like that. With it in that configuration we should just be able to pull it back and out. Do note there is a particular model number or particular way they go in. Looking at the model and the model number SK Hynix PC4 3200 DDR4 3200 MHz. I think, I think it's single rank going by the 1R and we slide that back in at 45 degrees, similar to the NVMe. 
Make sure you go a single way. Only if it's one way, then push down. Hear that click, it is reconnected. Same with over here. To, out to the sides, jumps up, pull it out. And we're also SK Hynix 3200 megahertz. That's all good. Put that back in, push down. We're good from there. Looking around the board, we have speaker connector here. Purely just for one channel. Just move those screws out of the way so I don't bump them off. So speaker connector, headphone jack, Ethernet, USB, HDMI, screen connector. We do also have this connector here that is open. I am not sure why that is. So I don't know what was meant to go there, whether or not there's a touch screen model. I do see HDT written there, but I'm not too sure what that's in reference of. We go across. Don't have too much. I'm assuming that's going to be CPU then GPU, possibly the other way around. I may be completely wrong. Because this is a relatively low wattage GPU in here. I believe it's only a 50 watt 6500M, because that's the maximum rating they go to. Two removable fans, both of which are relatively large. And zooming in a bit closer, if you do end up damaging the power cable on it, it is nicely removable. Here, leading up, around, under this bracket here, we have the power jack right there. So overall, pretty straightforward machine. Sadly, we do lose out on the expandability, either via a secondary M.2 or even a 2.5 inch drive, which as you can see, we don't have any extra room to actually put one in. Better to reconnect that battery before I seal this back up. And also we do have a MediaTek Wi-Fi card over here. What are we? We are a MediaTek MT7921. Now I'm gonna get this back together, give it a fresh reinstall and see how we go from there. If you have upgraded your M.2 NVMe, what you will need to be able to use after that is either a Windows 11 reinstall USB or a Windows 10 USB. Either way, if you haven't already cloned the drive, you will have to do the fresh reinstall. I'll line this back up. Strangely, it doesn't really want to go back in, which is not nice. I do you believe one pin might be out of alignment? In, in. Push, there we go. Now we're reconnected. So do be cautious of this bit of plastic here, which is it looks like to be a little bit of a deflector. And also looking underneath, this is what we see. We can see one thermal pad here which will be making contact over here. And we have the two cutouts of the fan holes over here. One, two, three. Not sure what these are making contact on. Let's find that out. In contact on long here, I believe. But this should fold shut. Push down. Clamp, 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 clamp. And along this section here, there we go. And from there, proceed to put back your seven Phillips head screws, all of which I believe are of the same length. So that should be pretty straightforward. And I hope this helps and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.